education institutions across the globe are grappling with such an unprecedented decision for fall 2020. The key challenge is to balance out issues of health, safety for students and faculty, and the mission for teaching and providing students with the right environment to learn. Could we go back to business as usual, or should we expect a new normal post COVID-19? And what would this new normal look like? There are no easy answers to these questions and multiple contingency plans ultimately have to be developed. Agility and flexibility are central. So what is the state of thinking at AUC with regards to these questions? My name is Ghaida Barsoum. I am the chair of the Public Policy and Administration Department, and I have the privilege of moderating this important campus conversation about the planning process for when and how we return back to campus. With me today is a very distinguished panel of participants, President Francis Richardoni, Councillor Ashraf Hatim, Provost Ihab Abdurrahman, Associate Provost Ahmed Tolba, VP Sarah Rafat, VP Shirin Shakir, VP Ayman Abdul Latif, Dr. Hassam Ala Eddin. Welcome to, to all of you and thank you for joining us at this campus conversation. I'm going to start with President Richardoni. I'm going to ask you the key question here. When and how do we return to campus? Please give us an update on the state of thinking about this issue. Thank you, Dr. Rada. And in your introduction, you really nailed the key questions we've all been focusing on. And I know our viewership is interested to hear us address today. I will come to, to that. And I will, my colleagues here will go into great detail and will respond to all questions on precisely the when and the how. Let me step back a bit and state once again, as I always have in these meetings, my just heartfelt pride and appreciation and gratitude to all of the, uh, to the provost and each of the people on this call, the, the senior uh, faculty and staff, but all the faculty and staff and students who have been participating in what we announced a, a month or so ago as the uh, president's operational excellence initiative. That's the the organizational uh, shell in which we're brought together as many of the best minds of the campus as we could in an orchestrated fashion to address a whole series of questions uh, sorted out over seven main thrusts and uh, some for the short term, some for the longer term. The provost uh, is the super chair of, of two of these and I'm glad that Dr. Tolba is on because we're really gonna be bearing down in his area of the immediate uh, question of when and how, and then I would say the why. We've adopted guiding principles for this, you could say an army. It's so many people who are working together. Dr. Iman Magahid is, is also making sure that all the committees are speaking with each other daily. She has an amazing report that we're about to make available. Um, the guiding principles have been, as always, the health and safety of everybody who's on our campuses, our students, faculty, and staff. That's number one. It, it's obvious, but it's a hard thing to protect in the time of this pandemic. And number two, having secured number one as much as we can, we must continue to support our students' academic journeys. And it is not only teaching here at AUC, it is teaching informed by research. So the research has to continue at some level too. So number two is continuing the academic progress of our students. And subsidiary to that is we've tried to take this as more than just a defensive play, not just to hunker down, cut expenses, minimize. We want to use this to advance the continuous improvement that is part of the AUC story. So that's what all of our seven committees are, are working on, and, and we can go into as much detail later as we want. The context is shifting on us. Dr. Anthony Fauci in the United States uh, stated it uh, early last month when many American communities, as Egypt and the rest of the world was looking at, okay, how do we open up? On what pace? What are the triggers? What are the conditions? And what he stated was, the question that all organizations, communities, governments, families, individuals have to answer is that of risk tolerance. How much risk of sickness and even death are we prepared to accept in order to return sooner to some semblance of normal? 
So that's been our background. And Egypt has been learning, AUC has been learning that we really don't have much choice. We have to learn in some way to carry on with our mission and our lives. And I think everyone understands that there is no reduction of the risk to zero. We don't want to stay only online uh, any longer than we have to. And the choices are not zero or 100%. There's a range in between. And that's what Dr. Tolba and others will be uh, addressing here today. At every point, there are decisions to make how much risk can we accept and how do we mitigate the risks. So Vice President uh, Shireen Shaka can talk about some of the risk, the physical risk mitigation uh, measures we're doing. Provost and, and, and Dr. Tolba can talk about the academic um, programming changes to mitigate risk while enabling us to go with our mission. Um, uh, again, I'm just so, uh, so proud to be uh, serving with this fine group of people. Uh, I'm amazed at the students' resilience and commitment. They've shown great success in this difficult spring term. We're off to a very good start in summer term with uh, full numbers, just amazingly. Our numbers for the fall of people who are uh, eager to enroll at AUC are, are, are better than ever with a, a strong waiting list of excellent candidates. So I'm very optimistic that whatever choices we make, they will be the right ones for our community because we, all the voices will be participating. Let me stop there, Dr. Gavada. Excellent. Thank you so much, President Richard Doni. I'm going to move on to Councillor Ashraf Hatem, and I'm going to ask you about the thinking within the public higher education system, the Ministry of Higher Education. What is happening there? When and, when and uh, how are they returning to campus, if I may ask this question, just to know the setting where we're in? Okay, thank you, Dr. Rada. Uh, as we all know that we are now, uh, we have a, a sort of a phase three, which is a community uh, presence of the COVID-19 uh, virus. And we are approaching 40,000 uh, cases, confirmed cases, which is announced by the Ministry of Health. And uh, we are approaching uh, four uh, to 500 uh, fatalities. Uh, still, this is a, a number which is not uh, very high like uh, Europe, like uh, the States, but uh, it's still uh, in the, it, we didn't reach the peak yet. We did, we, and we'll not know how uh, uh, where is the peak, except when we uh, come down from the peak. Uh, the government, as all government of the world, stated that it will uh, start uh, reopening uh, the facilities and that as today, the Prime Minister has uh, uh, stated that it, it decreased the curfew for one more hour, so it will be from 8 o'clock in, uh, in, in the evening until 4 o'clock in the morning. And uh, from the 15th of June, uh, the uh, uh, sports clubs will uh, open uh, with, uh, with, of course, all the precautions. As for the, and of course, and the Sanawaya Amma will, will, uh, will be in its, in its uh, as a, uh, an examination for entry of the, uh, the universities will uh, be on, on time. As for universities, uh, the uh, plan is that uh, the uh, examinations uh, on uh, the last years, the, the, the graduating classes for, uh, for uh, universities will be uh, in the 1st of July. They will start that from 1st of July until the end of July. And they are pl uh, planning to have, a so the, the Supreme Council of Universities are now planning to have a, the, uh, the next semester, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the fall semester, in a hybrid way. In, in most, most of the classes will be face-to-face, -face, but it will have a big part which can be done in uh, a distant uh, learning. And uh, they, they are working on this, like uh, uh, our uh, UC faculty are working on this. Thank you, Dr. Ad. Thank you so much, Councillor Hatem. Um, uh, it looks like everybody's moving into the similar directions here. Um, my questions now are to Provost Hiram Abdurrahman. He's the chair of the Committee on Academic Mission. And I have two questions for him, specifically for those who are uh, joining AUC, students who are joining AUC, incoming students. 
So my first question is about the first year experience and what are the preparations for these uh, students who are coming in, uh, joining in fall 2020? And I have another very uh, technical question, and I know you're the right person to answer that. We have students from Sanawiya Amma who are not going to sit for the islet. They will not have islet scores. So what message do we have for them? Two questions for you, Professor Rahman. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gada. The, for the first question, we are uh, planning for the incoming students or at le uh, also to uh, have a little bit of experience of our campus if we go to online uh, teaching. And uh, Ahmed will talk about that in a minute. Ahmed Tolba, my colleague here, will talk about that in a minute. Um, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we, we, Ahmed and I just came from a provost council meeting we were, when we were discussing the plan for the fall. Dean George Marquis updated us also about his plan to with, the, uh, with Vice President Dina Borai on the uh, orientation for our students that's going to be blended. Part of it is going to be face to face, part of it is going to be uh, online. So we are planning for our new uh, cohort to get to know AUC uh, during this hard time. And uh, for the, the second question, which is related to uh, English uh, uh, placement exams for our incoming students. We know that TOEFL and ILS has started to open a little bit and we encourage our students to start taking to take those exams. But in case if they don't open, we have a plan B that, uh, that we will offer them another set of exam that will actually compensate for the TOEFL or for the ILS. Uh, so, so we can admit them. And we have actually looked at that long time ago. So we have a plan for that already. Perfect. Thank you so much, Provost Abdurrahman. Uh, my questions now are to Associate Provost Ahmed Tolba. He's also the head of the Fall 2020 Plans Task Force. Uh, uh, Professor uh, Tolba, I know everybody has this question. What is happening in Fall 2020? Will it be face-to-face -face or online? What are the scenarios in each case? Uh, what can we expect? As, when can we expect the final decision on this issue? Uh, thank you very much. I know that this is a very, very important question. Uh, and I would like to highlight what the task force has done so far and what scenarios we had in mind and, uh, and analyzed and what possibilities we have for the fall. Uh, the first is uh, the task force started working on that two, two and a half months ago, and we, we did analysis of internal and external factors. What's happening at other universities globally? What's happening? Uh, what is the status at AUC? Uh, and we uh, exposed our ideas and recommendations, our preliminary recommendations to all stakeholders. Uh, we conducted six focus groups with students and faculty. We, con we consulted with the University Senate with the Provost Council, with the Student Union, with the Steering Committee of the Operational Excellence uh, Groups. And uh, uh, we came up with a, a direct a, a recommendation, yet it's not final. It is still in the process. So I just wanted to clarify that point. However, uh, the recommendation is, is straightforward and simple. We have three modalities that are possible for fall 2020. The, the two modalities, uh, the two extreme modalities are to go full face-to-face -face with measures, which is a very low probability to happen because of the measures that are needed. This, uh, and of course, the second modality, which is the other way, is to go full online. So we are preparing for both. It, should things get incredibly great uh, in the summer, which is a very low probability, we are prepared for uh, having uh, some face-to-face -face on campus. However, should the things get worse in the summer and we still, um, uh, the curve is still has not flattened and the risk is high, we may refer to full online. The third modality which we are recommending to start the fall with is uh, a, a, a targeted curriculum whereby we have a, uh, an online, uh, preliminarily online version or online courses are the main modality that we have. And we have some selected face-to-face -face courses that will, re, will, will preserve the quality of education and that, which will allow the campus to prepare for all the possible measures for safety and security. So to summarize, the current recommendation is to go for a low density or a lower density campus, whereby most courses to be offered online 
and some selected courses that are highly important to be offered face-to-face. -face. These selected courses could be um, uh, uh, science labs, could be studios, so, so could be courses that really lose a lot of the lear learning outcomes if, um, if they are not offered face-to-face. Um, -face. Also, we have in our consideration while analyzing our courses or activities related to freshmen, and I'm coordinating with Dean Marquis on that so that we make sure that first year uh, semester, fourth semester students and first year students are also exposed as much as possible uh, to the campus if security and safety are preserved. The, de the decision, when will it be ready? Uh, we are working now on the specific schedule. We, uh, uh, the, our recommendation is being discussed at the senior uh, leadership group and with the board next week. So we expect a final decision by the end of June with clear communications with all faculty and students. And this is just prior to the fall registration for students. So we, uh, we will do our best to clarify everything for the students so they know exactly how the courses are gonna be offered and which courses are gonna be offered by which uh, mode of instruction. Thank you. Excellent, thank you so much. So now I will know as a student which courses are going to be online, which courses are not going to be online. This is going to be communicated to every student. This is fantastic. Thank you so much for this clarification. And I'm sure we have to wait for the final decision on this, on this issue. Uh, my next question is to VP Sarah Rifat. She's the Senior Associate Vice President for Human Resource Resources and the Chair of the Human Resources Committee. Uh, VP Sarah, I know you have a lot on your plate uh, as we're continuing to work uh, remotely. This has implications of human resource management at AUC. So what is the policy? What should we tell our staff uh, specifically after June 30th? Will we continue uh, uh, online or should we return to campus? Who will return to campus? Would you please elaborate on this issue? Uh, thank you, Dr. Rada. And uh, we are now into the third month uh, of working uh, remote experience. And uh, I'm taking uh, this chance to thank our staff for their hard work, effort, and uh, flexibility managing uh, such uh, critical change in the way we are working. The intention actually is to continue working remotely until further notice because uh, the safety uh, for our staff is our top priority and we want to make sure that we are covering all variables and aspects before we ask our staff to return to campus. As we can hear from our colleagues uh, in the academic area that they are still working on the modules that how students will come back to campus and this is definitely will impact staff going back to campus. So at this point of time, we will announce uh, working remotely until further notice, uh, and we will work hard on putting a module in place during the summer to ensure the safety uh, for our staff. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Uh, my next question is for VP Shirin Shaker. She's the Vice President for, President for Management and Operation, and she's the Chair of Management and Operations Committee. Um, uh, VP uh, Shaker, we've heard uh, VP Tolba talk about the possibility of students going back to campus. So, and, and possibly the possibility of some staff members and of course uh, faculty members to go back to campus. How do we um, guarantee the safety of uh, those who are going to be on campus? What measures and precautions are going to be in place? Uh, and how will AUC apply them? Sure. Hello, Dr. Reda. Uh, these are very, very important questions, of course, that we're, um, and uh, as, uh, as the President has mentioned, that the committees are busy trying to answer all these questions in a way that provides the maximum safety and security to all the community, uh, students, faculty, and staff. We are, um, we are now working very closely with the academic committees um, as, as operations to be able to pave the way for a, for a safe and secure a return to, um, to campus, a gradual return to campus. Um, first of all, uh, masks and face coverings will be mandatory. So for all the community members uh, and even students, masks will have to be worn at all times in open and closed areas. Uh, we will also, and, th and this is mandated by the government, so we will apply it within the campus um, all over. We are also 
making sure that in terms of hygiene, sanitizers, the cleaning and the disinfecting is happening at an appropriate level and increase, increased level. Um, and, I, and I have to say that, you know, we have a very, um, we have a very uh, a, a strict protocol in terms of when, it, when a COVID-19 um, case is found or suspected that we have a, you know, closing of the space, infecting and cleaning and leaving it for 48 hours until we can access again. So we're making sure that everything is applied and, and will be adhered to in a, in a very, um, in a very uh, strict way. Uh, we also will be taking this opportunity in the coming few weeks to make sure that all the required signage so that people, wherever they go, are reminded everywhere of, of all the measures they need to take, that awareness is, is raised and then they know, for example, the social distancing that they need to maintain. And so this, is, this will be visible uh, all, all across campus and that's what we're working on in those uh, few weeks. There will be changes to the way we, we provide some services like food services, for example. There will be it will be a lot more limited and will change in nature so that we have a lot more prepackaged items, et cetera. So, so we are working on uh, basically um, all, all the changes that need to be taken, taken into account to provide for a safe um, uh, return to, um, to campus. We, there's also on the medical side, you know, whenever we have a suspected case, we, we, uh, there's, a, there's a new team, team in place now that is a tracing team that will make sure that anybody in contact is, um, is aware and that we provide the maximum level of, uh, of trying to prevent anybody from for getting further in, infected. Um, a lot of work that is already happening in those few weeks and even more work in the coming few weeks before the, uh, the return to campus. Uh, thank you, Dr. Reda. Excellent. Thank you so much, Shireen. Um, I'm, I'm going to go now to uh, VP Ayman Abdul Latif, uh, Vice President for Digital Com uh, Transformation, and he's the chair of the Digital Optimization Committee. And a lot has happened on that front. We've moved suddenly to teaching online in spring 2020. We're now teaching summer completely online, and there's a possibility, obviously, there's a possibility that we're going to go online for, for a number of classes in fall 2020. So what does this mean for IT? What are the planned projects? How can we make sure that the service is at its optimal level? So this is the optimization committee. So what is the, how can we reach the optimal level of this service? Thank you, Dr. Reda. And uh, yes, indeed. Um, in many ways, for us, uh, we've acknowledged that this is the new normal. So we acknowledge that going forward, we will continue to drive in a hybrid environment for the foreseeable future. The, a lot of our heavy lifting happened actually, as you had suggested, um, in the early March, maybe even uh, back to February timeframes, uh, preparing ourselves to go and transition to a full online. But since then, also we have the committee, the optimization committee that's uh, been working really hard and we've divided the work along five uh, separate work streams. One is around accessibility. The second is support. We have tools and resilience. We have security and we have capacity. So all of these are areas where we are assessing and reassessing the work that, that needs to be done to optimize the experience in, uh, in, in the fall as we uh, have this uh, hybrid environment. Um, as far as accessibility, and there's a whole level of detail and depth uh, around each one of those work streams, but I'll just touch briefly upon each one of those. Uh, as far as accessibility is concerned, we really want to make sure that our students, faculty, and staff have, are able to access the resources that they need. So we want to make sure that they have the devices that enable that, that they have the data lines uh, when that's not part of their uh, current configuration. Uh, we want to make sure that we are uh, you know, maybe longer term, but to working towards that, have uh, an initiative called Mobile Everywhere, where we have most of our features of the services that we're offering uh, delivered through a mobile platform in addition to the typical uh, computer platform that you use. Um, cashless and paperless remain very high on our list of priorities. Um, and they, these are long-term initiatives, but we are accelerating some of these aspects to make sure that, uh, for example, in, in the fall, uh, everybody can uh, pay the tuition and make all their payments 
in a completely cashless environment and remotely and uh, make sure that they are safe and secure. Uh, support, we want, we again continue to make sure that uh, support is configured in a way uh, to sustain uh, the hybrid environment. We will have people on campus, we will have people online, and we need to be able to provide that kind of support uh, both remotely and in person. We're investing in online uh, software uh, that allows us to provide that uh, online and remote uh, support capabilities. We're also leveraging new technologies such as chatbots to fill in some of the blanks, uh, also backed up by artificial intelligence. So we're taking this opportunity, as uh, President Richard Doni mentioned before, not just to be responding to the situation, but rather to innovate and make sure that we are in, uh, we're leveraging all kinds of uh, uh, solutions that are out there. On the tools, I'll, I'll just add one more comment around tools and resilience. We, we, you know, there are new use cases and new demands and new requests that are coming up as people uh, recognize the fact that we are, this is the new normal. Um, one good example is around webinars and events, online events. We had introduced this capability early on in uh, March, actually. But at that point, we were, as a community, still struggling to make that transition. And there wasn't a full recognition of the need for that. Now we are looking at some of those solutions, how to provide those, and an acknowledgement of the fact that even in the future, um, even if we come back completely uh, on campus, these are areas where we are going to be leveraging these new capabilities. Uh, online webinars, online events are here to stay. So we're doing a lot of work across all of these work streams um, and continuing to invest in new technologies and new capabilities to ensure, as you mentioned, Dr. Veda, that we're optimizing for this new normal. Excellent. And I, I, I just add that uh, for the first time in our history, we go, we submit our thesis paperless. And I was personally very happy because we consume a lot of papers for th thesis submissions. So I'm very happy for the environmental, possible environmental effect of that. Uh, thank you so much. And I move on to Dr. Hossein Hassan. He's the Active Chief Health and Safety Officer. Uh, Dr. Hassan, I'm going to ask you about the protocol to handle, to handle a COVID-19 case on campus. Should they go to the clinic? What is the situation? Thank you, Dr. Ghada. Uh, we have some confirmed cases among UC community members that have tested the PCR positive for COVID-19, parallel with the numbers of the new cases in Egypt, and they are all under treatment. The medical examination and medication prescription will be through the medical insurance network hospitals. For the admission of severe cases, medical insurance network hospitals will accept the case based on the assessment of the medical condition and its criticality in addition to the availability of beds. We deeply regret that the EFC has no facilities of its own either to treat or even isolate students, staff, or faculty who report or reveal symptoms while on our campuses. EUC also have no independent influence or ability to arrange hospitalization or other medical care for anyone who may need it. EUC provides medical insurance for faculty and staff and requires all students either to enroll in the student medical insurance plan offered by GlobMed or to present proof of enrollment in their own medical insurance plans as a condition of enrollment. In the absence of any AFC capability to care for persons who may have COVID-19 or believe they have been exposed to COVID-19, AFC's policy is to take all official recommendation, practical and policy precautions to mitigate the risk of transmission of the virus. The first policy measure is to warn all students, faculty and staff to stay home and seek medical advice if they feel any symptoms or believe they may have been closely exposed to the virus. Thank you, Dr. Thank you so much. This was very clear and concise. Thank you so much for that. I'm going to go back to President Richard Doni and ask him an important, about an important issue, uh, which are imp uh, international students. Uh, what is the message we have for international students? What can we say f uh, to them? Should they buy their ticket now? Should they wait? What message do we have for them? Well, 
it remains one of our strategic priorities to bring international students physically back to this amazing country. Egypt is just, of, of all the places, an American student or a Chinese student or a European student or an African student or an Indian student could choose to study in the world for a diverse and exciting experience. Egypt has to be at the top of the list. I have to admit my personal prejudice. I keep coming back to Egypt. So we want international students to come when the time is right, physically to come, when they, their parents, their home sending institutions uh, believe it's right and feel it's right. And when it becomes possible, remember international travel remains largely uh, shut down in, in many ways. So we have to recognize the reality that it's going to be difficult to uh, have students make those decisions to come, enroll, take a term, uh, come and enroll for the full four-year experience or two-year graduate experience. We want those days to come back. Uh, meanwhile, we, we do have a handful of international students. We will do all we can to care for them. There are questions that the, uh, this planning team is working on regarding uh, whether, when, how to open the dormitories with what protocols. We have dormitories off campus functioning now with very uh, limited and special restrictions in place. So um, we do not anticipate having uh, many uh, international students here, certainly for the fall. Uh, we hope they will be able to come back in greater numbers as the world learns how to deal with this pandemic, as, as vaccines are developed, as treatments are developed. I will say this, just as um, uh, Vice President Abdel Latif has mentioned, we're trying in every way we can to uh, learn from this and turn this to our advantage. So with respect to international students, imagine you're in London or in Washington DC or Indiana or Seattle or California, and you wanna study Arabic or Islamic art and architecture or uh, conflict resolution in the Middle East or comparative religion uh, or, 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 where would you most wish to do that? Egypt has to be one of the top answers, of course. And AUC has relationships with so many of those students' home universities. So now that students in all those different locations are used to working online and, online, and the professors are used to working online, and AUC is so well connected to them, in part, Dr. Tolba's office has been doing this for years. There's an opportunity here for those students to actually get a part of the AUC experience, get a lot of the substance of it. They will miss the best part, which is being among Egyptians, of course, the Egyptian food and music and all of that. But a lot of that we can deliver online until such time as we can bring them back. My own hope is um, that we will use this period to attract many more students to AUC for the online part of the experience. And that will so whet their appetites to experience Egypt in full that in time, as world conditions permit, those students will, will say, I just have to go to Egypt. I just have to study with the great professors there at AUC. So we aim high. Thanks, Dr. Rather. Absolutely, we aim high. Um, thank you, President Richardoni. My next question is to Councillor Ashraf Hatim. Uh, Councillor Hatem, you've answered the question on uh, the higher education system. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that you are a medical doctor with a strong public service record in this field, and that you're uh, now actually the, chairing the national, one of the national task forces in response to COVID-19. So I have a number of questions that came from the community asking specifically about this issue. Uh, my first question is, how effective is plasma transformation from recovered uh, patients in treating COVID-19? How successful is it in Egypt and how will it be applied? Okay, so for, for this first question, uh, Dr. Rada, uh, the convalescent plasma, uh, you know that there is no uh, approved uh, drug, single drug, which treats uh, uh, COVID-19 virus up to now. There are protocols for treatment. One of the very uh, uh, recent protocols, which was approved by the FDA for an emergency treatment, 
is the, uh, uh, the use of convalescent plasma. What, what do you mean by convalescent plasma? That somebody has COVID-19 and after he turns uh, from positive to negative and, he, and then 14 days after, so it is a total of 28 days or 30 days, we, uh, he, is, he is donating his uh, blood. His blood, he, he, number one, we must measure his uh, immunoglobulins, which are the protective antibodies, uh, immunoglobulin G, and if it is high, uh, uh, we have a level which is uh, uh, it must be about 1000 and if it is high he can donate his blood he gives 500 cc's of his blood and then plasma is separated from other constituents of blood and uh, of course it is also uh, scanned for any other viruses or, uh, or any uh, other uh, problems in, the, in, the, in this plasma and then it's given to a, a patient who has uh, COVID-19. Our protocol now in Egypt is to give it to moderate to severe cases if they have what is known as a, 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 a cytokine storm, which is that he has a, 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 the, the disease have increased, have fever after a while of his uh, admission to the hospital, or uh, has uh, the inflammatory markers have increased. So we give them uh, uh, this convalescent plasma. We have now used about, in, in the Ministry of Health, we used about uh, 30 for 30 patients. In the, in the Ministry of Higher Education and University Hospitals, we have used another 25 of them. Uh, the results are promising. We cannot say that it is, there, it, is, uh, it is still on clinical trial basis, but it is a very promising uh, way uh, in the protocol for severe cases of COVID-19. Thank you, Dr. Thank you so much. So I should put on my list of favorite contacts those who, of my friends who have recovered from COVID-19. I yes. guess this is the right thing to do now. Um, thank you. Uh, my next question is to uh, Provost Ehab Abdurrahman. Uh, Provost Abdurrahman, I have two questions from faculty members uh, with regards to returning to campus. There are actually two questions that are at opposite direction. So the first one is from a faculty member who's asking, when we're returning to campus, will all the faculty members who are worried about their health have the option of not teaching face-to-face? -face? So this is one question. The other question, if we are teaching via Zoom, will we have access to our offices? Can we do the Zoom meetings from our offices? Uh, so I guess th these are two opposite directions, people wanting to be on campus, even, if, even though they're, they're teaching online and people unable to come to campus. So I'd, need, I'd like to hear your comments on that. So uh, Dr. Gada, thank you very much. Uh, please let me, before I answer the two questions, to uh, thank the faculty for the, their heroic work during the spring semester. We had. Uh, a very successful spring semester. As the president mentioned, I mentioned a minute ago to uh, the, our summer enrollment is really high and that's due to the success of the spring semester. And I wish I can call the names of every single faculty, full-time and adjunct faculty to thank them, but uh, uh, I really thank them for their effort. Um, for the second uh, question, which is, can a faculty member use his office uh, to, uh, uh, during that uh, crisis. Uh, we never actually stopped the faculty member from using their offices. All what we told them is they need to let us know that they are coming to their offices so we can help them actually maybe disinfect after they leave or help them actually before they come disinfect the area before they come to make sure that they are safe uh, when they are on our campus. Uh, that's the answer for the second question. So the answer simply is yes, they can use their offices whenever they want all what they have to do is to communicate with their chairs and deans so we can actually help them be safe when they are on, the, on campus. And for uh, the first question, can you please repeat the first question, if I may? Sure. Um, if a faculty feels concerned about her or her, uh, his or her health, uh, yeah. they, they, they don't feel that they want or they are able to teach on face-to-face, uh, -face, what would be the decision from AUC? Definitely, this is one of the also issues that we discussed today in the Provost Council and the committee of uh, Dr. Ahmad Tulba 
committee members of Dr. Ahmad Tuba have been discussing that for some time now. And definitely health of our of every single member of our community comes before anything else. The university will be able to accommodate faculty member who have health issues and cannot come to campus to teach face-to-face. Uh, -face. Uh, the university is planned to do that. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, my next question is to Associate Provost Ahmed Tolba. Um, uh, uh, it's again about the task force and the criteria the task force identified for selecting um, different, choosing from the different models and the trends across the globe. I know that they've been looking at different trends globally. So what criteria did they put in place as they chose which model to uh, adopt or uh, or adapt to our to our experience here at AUC. Uh, thank you, Dr. Reda. This is a very important question. Uh, I would like to uh, highlight that we have done a, a very good uh, and deep analysis of what all universities are have been doing globally. We identified 15 scenarios that could possibly be used. Uh, we eliminated the scenarios that some universities may adopt that are not suitable for the AUC context at all including cancelling the fall semester or only allowing uh, graduates to come, stuff like this. So we focus only on the ones that are possible. We analyze them deeper. We involve the community to see which ones could be approved or what drawbacks or positives, positive elements could be for each. And then we came up with the, the solutions we have. Uh, so what happened globally is that um, uh, some universities decided to go fully online, like Cambridge, like six schools of Harvard, like the California State University system and some other universities that decided to commit to face-to-face -face with measures while being cautious before uh, the start of the semester uh, and uh, m a large majority of universities are at the same state as us and when we, we listened to webinars and and read articles this is still the discussion going on across the universities which uh, how they can perfectly adopt the best option so many of the universities are adopting a hybrid option like we're doing and the, the model that we plan to apply seems to be a very, very um, suitable to many universities that look like us. So we looked at benchmarks very well. Um, what are the guiding principles for us to select this? We set some five guiding principles driven from the guiding principles for the whole operational excellence committee. Uh, the first and foremost is health and safety for the whole community faculty, staff, students, everybody is are our top priority. That's why we are trying to be as cautious as possible. Um, uh, second priority is the quality of education and delivering what we, what, what we uh, the learning outcomes of our courses. So that's the second factor that we evaluated the criteria with. And that's why we opted to go for the face-to-face um, -face courses that really require, uh, require on-campus presence and usage of equipment in order to achieve the learning objectives. Our third one is uh, after aligning with VP Shireen Shaker is to make sure that operationally we are capable of applying the measures again for safety standpoint and also to make sure that the university is in control and on top of all um, uh, processes. Uh, in terms of quality of education, we also looked at uh, how we can deliver the online programs perfectly. So we are aligning with VP Ayman Abdul Latif and the Center for Learning and Teaching to make sure that the fall is going to be different from the spring. We believe that the spring was primarily a remote uh, instruction as a result of a change that was sudden. But the fall, we are planning ahead. We are planning for the online, uh, full online, even if we can, uh, we can go for face-to-face. -face. Uh, everybody has to be ready with that. And all faculty will be well-trained to be well-prepared for the fall semester. Uh, another criterion that we thought about that's very important is simplicity, simplicity in communication and simplicity in implementation. We do not want to send a message to the community that is confusing. So we thought that with our plan needs to be clear and simple. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, 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 Provost Tolba. Uh, I have a request from Provost Abdurrahman to comment on this. So I'm going to invite Provost Abdurrahman. Thank you, Dr. Ghada. Thank you, Dr. Tolba. Uh, yes, I want to actually stress on a point that no matter what will be the modality that we will start our fall semester with, 
I think the message here to all faculty to start preparing their courses online because if we do that, we will be ready for any scenario. So my, I urge the faculty to start from now working with their chairs and their deans to prepare for their courses in the fall online. Once we have those ready, any move from online to face-to-face -to -face or, or vice versa will be much easier on us. Thank you. Excellent, thank you. That's a clear message for all of us. We have to start preparing our courses online. I prepare for that, thank you. Um, my next question is to uh, Vice President um, Sarah Rifat, and this is a, a futuristic question, Sarah. I, some, of the fa some of the staff members are asking, and there's an assumption at the beginning, after the proven, su proven success of remote working at AUC, Will AUC consider flexible working conditions, including the possibility of remote working after the pandemic to reduce our carbon, carbon printing, save energy and time and enhance productivity? Sarah, what's your comment on that? Uh, thanks, Dr. Reda. And uh, yes, we are looking into uh, this option and proposal, especially with the HR committee, uh, and how we can um, benefit from the experience of working remotely in the future. Uh, we need to take only into consideration that in the last two and a half months, we worked remotely with the minimum uh, campus operations and essential tasks. Uh, and uh, this, this um, module may not continue in the fall, so we may, of course, work on a guidelines for working remotely in terms of a time frame and uh, activities, but it cannot be full working remotely. It will depend, of course, on the campus uh, activities. But this is an option we are working on within specific guidelines and specific time frames. Thank you. Very nice, thank you so much, Sarah. I have a question to VP Shireen Shaker. Uh, and, uh, this time we're asking her about safety on the bus. Of course, it's very difficult to maintain social distancing on the bus. So what are the measures and precautions for that? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Reda. Uh, actually, we, uh, we are spacing out seats on the bus. So, this is, so if anybody has been using any of our services currently, because we're still operating some buses, we've already um, blocked some seats. So not every seat in the aisle you can, uh, you can, you can use. You, have one, you, you, you cannot be sitting adjacent to another person. So, so in answer to your question, no, we can apply a degree of social distancing to buses. And we did, and we will continue doing that. So all the bus fleet will be marked very clearly the seats where you can ride and the seats that you need to leave vacant. This, of course, has an implication on the bus capacity. And we've taken that into account in the, in the, in the planning and the routes that are going to be uh, used. So this, this uh, is already being done and will be, will be done throughout as we plan the return to campus. We also have uh, sanitizers on the buses for people to use. There's a very clear, there's a very clear um, cycle of cleaning after each uh, use, etc. So we're taking it very seriously, especially that the transportation part of the day is one that has a high risk uh, by nature of you know putting people on a vehicle together so this we we are definitely taking very very seriously and we were applying the measures i also want to comment as a general you know advice also to us and the public and all and you know all our community is that whenever we you are riding uh, in a in a in a car with a driver um the advice is that it would be one passenger and not two again for the same reason to maintain the the um, the social distancing uh, so we, um, just to comfort, you know, people, we are, we are taking it very seriously and doing our best to basically adhere to, uh, to, uh, to all the safety and um, hygiene requirements on using AUC's transportation system. Uh, thank you, Dr. Reda. Thank you so much. Um, my next question is to, is to VP Ayman Abdul Latif, and this is coming from the community. If I have to work uh, remotely at home, Will AUC provide me with a special uh, deal or a special offer for internet connection? Uh, thank you, Dr. Reda. Yes, that's a perennial question that uh, we have been getting. We are working diligently, actually, as we speak. Uh, we're connecting with the uh, providers, the ISPs, and the uh, uh, some of the larger um, mobile operators also to find uh, to arrange for programs that leverage our corporate uh, 
um, uh, payment structures. Um, there, as you can imagine, there are challenges that we have to work through both on our end and on, our, on their end. Sometimes these, uh, our internal financial systems aren't geared to allow for some of these programs, but we are working diligently. We are finding uh, willing partners in those, uh, uh, in those uh, mobile operators. Um, and uh, apart from that, we, yes, even barring finding some of those new modalities, we are able to invest for those uh, who are um, having uh, larger challenges than normal. In, in other words, sometimes uh, a person is in a, is in a place where they simply do not have landline uh, internet, and we are able to help with those and invest with them. So the answer is yes, across the board. Uh, it just depends on the situation. We are trying to put together larger scope programs and make them available to our community at large. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to go back to President Richard Doni and ask him two seemingly related question, uh, questions. One is from a student, of course, uh, would going online result, res uh, result in a decrease in tuition fees at AUC? And the other question is, would salaries of faculty and staff be affected uh, because of COVID-19 and the economic crisis? President Richard Dooney. Thank you, Dr. Ogada. Yes, those are related questions. They're really two sides of the same um, economic or fiscal coin. On the one hand, student tuition covers about uh, two thirds of our operating budget. That is to say, um, st uh, every student, the full rate payers, those who are not getting scholarships are getting a about a $10,000 a year subsidy. Um, because of our endowment, because we are a not-for-profit, thanks to gifts uh, of generous donors over the years. So students have a right to ask these questions. Um, on the other side of the coin come our faculty. Uh, uh, salaries are one of the highest uh, elements of our operating budget, both faculty and staff. The context, what makes this coin whole, is the excellence of the AUC experience. We have to be able to have not only high quality uh, faculty at world standards, uh, and that comes at a cost, but also many of them. Part of what makes the AUC experience special, whether you're physically present or online, is our uh, extraordinarily low student to faculty ratio. I, could, I, I always check this with the provost because it a little bit depends how you count but it's, uh, it, it is at the top of, of world standards for universities. About, uh, about 10 students, uh, Ahab, I would check with you on, on what it is this year, about 10 students for every faculty member. That's extraordinary. And especially if you're online, you want to have that extra ability to contact your, your faculty member and you want to be assured that that faculty member is, is just great. That's what we do at AUC. So our constant struggle is to keep our tuition down and, and keep our salaries and compensation for our faculty, especially up, so we can continue not only to recruit, but to retain the best that we can get, not only in Egypt, but, but in the region and in the world. That's a constant struggle. COVID-19 has made it even harder. Um, I'm happy to say, I, I wish I could be happier to, with even better news, that we've not had to in, increase. We're struggling to have a budget that will balance this year. Um, Provost and I and many on this call have been intensively working on this over the past uh, even more past months uh, of COVID and we will have a conversation with the uh, Board of Trustees coming up tomorrow in fact and over the coming week. We believe we're going to be able to hold to the tuition uh, uh, amount that we announced in February uh, without an increase, but I'm afraid we aren't going to be able to decrease because our costs are fixed. We, we have uh, our payroll costs, our costs of maintaining, operating, cleaning our facilities, even more. Uh, some, some costs have increased because of the additional measures we have to take to keep the place um, uh, healthy and safe and clean. Uh, Vice President uh, Sharker just mentioned the buses. We still have to operate a full bus with a driver, all those seats, 
only use half of the seats. That increases our cost. Those are just the micro examples of the many that we face. So I'm afraid we're doing everything we can to reduce our costs. We're unable to reduce tuition. And I do not blame students and parents for saying, but I'm not getting the physical presence experience that uh, I signed up for. That is true. We hope to come back to the full physical presence experience. Meanwhile, the online experience we're delivering is going to be, uh, we believe, extraordinary, the best that, that any universities in the world can do. On the faculty side, let me just say again in this meeting, and as the provost has said, our faculty deserve all kinds of, of a recognition, and that includes recognition through compensation. Uh, we're in a stringent uh, situation. Uh, we're trying to find ways of at least taking a, giving a symbolic recognition, if we can, in the form of uh, uh, you know, awards for performance. Uh, no amount of money, in my view, in, in the profession as a whole, no, no teachers, no great teachers or researchers anywhere are really paid enough. I think that's true at AUC. I wish we would be able to do more. We will be very fortunate if we're going to be able to find the budget to at least give a, uh, a symbolic recognition for the extra hard work that people have done. I, I think students know how much harder many of them are working. Maybe, maybe others find it easier online. But for sure, faculty have had to work much harder um, than they even normally do with such a high uh, uh, intensity of, of focus on the students as we have at AUC. So uh, uh, it's a sober answer, but it's a truthful one. We're not going to be able to decrease tuition for our students. We're not going to be able to raise faculty uh, salaries. We hope we'll be able to find some, as I say, very symbolic uh, levels of uh, awards for performance to faculty. I would say the same for, for staff. You know, um, there are a lot of heroes in this story. I, I guess we, I, I've mentioned in every one of these meetings, let me touch on here, the, um, the CLT uh, uh, team working with Ayman uh, uh, Abdul Latif on the technical side, but the CLT uh, learning and teaching group have looked at the pedagogy and matching it to the uh, technology. And, uh, and the training, um, whether it's that group in the administration who span also the faculty or the people who clean, the people who um, guard, the people who keep things running, the, the, not just the IT people at the, at the higher uh, technical skills end, but, but everybody is working under extraordinary circumstances here. I, and I, one would wish to recognize that with, with more pay we simply are not going to be able to generate uh, from, from raising tuition or from raising gifts uh, in these world environments, the kinds of funds it would like to have. So that's an honest answer and it's a, a complete one. I wish we could do more on both sides. Thank you, Dr. Gada. Thank you, thank you, for, thank you, President Cherdoni. Um, I'm going to uh, go back to uh, Provost Abdurrahman. I have a couple of questions from students. Um, all related to um, being here and there, being online and on campus. So I have a question for, from a student who is in Egypt, but not in Cairo, and they're checking whether they can have the option of being completely online as if they are uh, international students or have this option. And I actually, the opposite, I have a question from a student who's coming uh, 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 from a study abroad, uh, abroad, a study abroad program who is coming to Cairo, coming to AUC in the, in the, in, in the fall and is wondering whether uh, she or he will be able to uh, carry on with the program she or he signed up for. So this, uh, these are the two questions I'm going to uh, ask Professor Abdurrahman to give a response to. Uh, see, Dr. Rada, it seems that uh, the question itself reflects the diverse need of our community and we have to cope with that. We have to uh, make sure that we serve all of our community, our students, faculty, and staff uh, during this coming the fall semester. So, but all of those questions, were, we are actually discussing them at the moment. So, but again, uh, our fall semester, the recommendation so far is gonna be a lower density uh, campus. That means some classes will be offered face-to-face -face with specific measures to ensure the safety of our uh, community and some classes will be offered totally online uh, 
So that, that, the specific answer to those two students is to check which classes they will register for, but at the end of the day, the university is committed to our students to deliver the fourth semester uh, 2020. Excellent. I have a last question to you, Provost Abdurrahman, and it's uh, it's a more of a futuristic question. It's uh, it's coming from a student. Uh, will distant learning, online learning, be part of AUC's future, even after we hopefully uh, move from the COVID nineteen pandemic? What's your response to that? That's a very uh, important uh, question, and there is another task force also led by Dr. Ayman Ismail looking at the future of academics at AUC that has 13 faculty member and staff member, uh, faculty and staff members in it. And that, that committee is doing a really, really a good work. And we will go out to the community and discuss that work very soon. But let me give you an answer actually about uh, online learning at, uh, at large. Online learning and te the online teaching and learning has become a reality. There is no going back on that. How to apply it? how to do it, it's going to be uh, left to every university to do that on its own. Every university will have a specific vision for the future and they will need to accommodate or, or actually to integrate online learning and teaching for the future. AUC has been actually uh, working on that domain for some time in the extended education part of our operation, which is the School of Continuing Education, the Executive Education, the School of Business and School of Gap, as well as the engineering and science service uh, uh, department in the, the School of Sciences and Engineering. And we have seen many success stories in that, in online learning. Uh, however, in the academic part of, uh, of, uh, of the house is a little bit slower in going into online learning. And I'm sure that uh, what happened in COVID-19 will change that. But I don't think that will actually replace face-to-face -face, uh, uh, learning at the UC. I don't think I don't see EUC going in in the future to be totally online university. That's I don't think this is happening. Thank you, Provost Abdurrahman. Everybody has done great on time. Uh, we've, we've covered all the questions in, in one hour, and I just have I need your your permission. I need to go off topic and ask President Richard Doni one last question, if you don't mind. Uh, we've been witnessing very large scale protests in the US against racial inequality and police brutality against Af uh, black Americans. And there's been strong calls by the Black Lives Matter movement. I'd like him to comment on this. this these are very historic moments and I'd like us to be part of this discussion. Thank you uh, again, Dr. Agada. I, some people have said, maybe it isn't so um, off topic. Maybe, maybe the world is facing two pandemics. One that is a, a, a virus, a, a biological virus, and another one that seems to be uh, emanating from different hotspots around the world. Sadly, now in my home country, the United States, uh, a pandemic of, of uh, otherization, of bigotry, of, of fear and hate, and then stirring violence into that mix to, to pursue those, uh, those terrible uh, attitudes and emotions. I have to say that as an American, I, 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 it, it's really stressful for me to see that happening in the United States of America. I thought the country had, had come a long way toward uh, overcoming some of those problems of racism and bigotry and the, and, and, the, and the violence that sometimes burst out, whether in policing or in other ways. Um, I have confidence and faith in the country. I believe we'll overcome it, but this is a moment of particular pain. I will say, None of those things have any place at any university, uh, certainly not in AUC. We celebrate uh, tolerance um, and, and diversity, more than tolerance. Tolerance is an insufficient word. We, we embrace diversity, whether for gender or nationality or race. It's baked into our philosophy of teaching, and it's what we stand for. So let no one have any doubt about what we stand for here at AUC. We reject all of those those uh, terrible things, and uh, we celebrate their opposite, and we try to inculcate that in our students, and our, I know our faculty live by those values too. So I hope that's, that's responsive to your question. Thank you very much. I think I, one of the things we're, that were said is the wrong, say, the wrong thing to say is to remain silent. So I'm happy that we're not remaining silent on this. Um, 
just to conclude, I want to thank everybody. I have learned a lot from this conversation. Thank you so much for your input. You've, been, you've, done, you've given great interventions, clear messages. I know I'm going to go home and maybe work on my uh, preparation for the uh, fall class. Thank you so much again and nice talking to you all.